for anyone who has ever tried to build something meant to last, whether it's a cabin, a shed, a timber frame, or even a simple set of outdoor equipment. There comes a moment when you realize the real enemy isn't fire, insects, or age. It's moisture. Moisture is the silent destroyer of wood across every climate and every era of building. It doesn't make noise, and it doesn't announce itself. It quietly enters the fibers, stays long enough to feed decay, and weakens the structure from the inside out. Civilizations that built in wood understood this far better than most people do today. They didn't simply coat timber with something and hope it held up. They built entire systems around keeping wood dry, controlling humidity, and creating natural moisture barriers long before modern membranes existed. And those methods still work. In this thermal vault guide, we're going to break down what long-term wood care really looks like, how historic moisture barriers functioned, and how you can apply those same principles whether you're maintaining a timber structure, working off-grid, or just trying to make your materials last decades instead of years. The first principle is understanding how moisture behaves in wood because long-term care starts long before the final finish goes on. Wood absorbs and releases moisture constantly, and if that exchange happens too slowly or unevenly, decay becomes inevitable. Ancient builders mitigated this through deliberate seasoning. They didn't rush construction. Timber was stacked off the ground in sheltered, ventilated spaces, often for months or an entire season. This wasn't superstition. Drying reduces internal stress, limits fungal opportunity, and prepares the wood to resist moisture cycles. If you're building today, even on a small home project, you can apply this by storing lumber on raised blocks, covering it from rain while leaving the sides exposed and allowing natural airflow to stabilize moisture content. A properly seasoned beam can last decades longer than one installed green. The next principle is eliminating direct moisture paths. Historic moisture barriers were not plastic sheets or rubberized membranes. They were clever combinations of drainage, capillary breaks, and controlled airflow. Viking halls, Japanese temples, and Roman storehouses all elevated their main structural timbers above the ground. You see, moisture from soil is relentless and ground contact wood fails faster than any other component. By placing sills on stone pads, stacked rocks, or carefully carved footings, builders created a simple but highly effective moisture barrier. Air could circulate under beams, and capillary rise from the soil was broken completely. This method is still one of the most effective ways to protect structural timber. Anyone building a shed, cabin or outdoor platform today can do the same by setting beams on compacted gravel and concrete piers or flat stones. Even just a few inches of elevation, really, dramatically extends the lifespan of the wood by preventing constant moisture exposure. Another major element of long-term moisture defence comes from, well, shaping the wood itself to shed water. Historic carpenters rarely left beam ends flat and exposed. Instead, they chamfered edges, added slight tapers, and oriented grain direction intentionally. In Japanese joinery, exposed end grain was kept minimal because, you know, end grain absorbs moisture about ten times faster than the sides. 
Medieval European builders added subtle slopes to window sills, door frames, and even structural joints, ensuring that water didn't sit on or inside the timber. For practical use today, this means beveling the tops of outdoor posts, shaping deck boards with a slight crown, or simply avoiding flat surfaces that allow water to stagnate. Honestly, a few minutes of shaping can save years of maintenance down the line. Surface treatments form the next layer of moisture barrier. And, you know, many historic finishes actually outperform some modern products precisely because they penetrate deeply instead of just sitting right on the surface. Pine tar in Scandinavia, linseed oil blends in Europe, tongue oil in East Asia, and natural resins across multiple cultures all serve the same purpose, to fill the wood's pores with a hydrophobic substance that slowed water absorption while still allowing the material to breathe. One of the biggest mistakes modern beginners make is assuming a thick, hard coating is always better. In reality, if moisture becomes trapped behind a non-breathable surface, decay accelerates from within. Effective barriers breathe. They repel moisture while still letting vapour escape. A practical modern approach is to apply boiled linseed oil or a linseed pine tar mixture in thin layers, allowing each coat to cure fully. Used on exposed beams, siding or outdoor furniture, this creates a flexible barrier that protects the wood while allowing natural moisture exchange. Ventilation really deserves its own focus because, you know, it often goes overlooked despite being one of the most important long-term strategies. Historic builders designed structures to stay dry through airflow. Raised floors, open eaves, vented attics, and space cladding all kept moisture from settling on or in wooden components. If you've ever seen siding rot from the inside while the outside still looks intact, well, you're seeing the consequences of poor ventilation. A modern builder can replicate successful historic methods by incorporating air gaps behind cladding, leaving space under floors, and positioning vents high and low to promote circulation. Even a simple detail, like leaving a half-inch gap at the bottom of exterior wall panels, can transform moisture performance. Another historic method worth understanding is thermal cycling. In cold climates, builders oriented structures to maximize sun exposure on key structural elements. Sunlight didn't just warm interiors, it helped dry outer timbers. Roof overhangs protected walls from driving rain, but their angles also moderated how much sun hit exposed wood. All of these methods, seasoning, elevation, shaping, breathable coatings, ventilation and thermal drying, work together as a system. That's why historic wooden buildings lasted centuries. They didn't rely on a single treatment or product, but on layered defences that controlled moisture at every stage. Modern builders too often skip these fundamentals, then attempt to fix problems after decay begins. Long-term wood care isn't reactive. It's preventative. When you combine historic principles with practical modern materials, you create structures that are far more resilient than those relying solely on commercial coatings. If this breakdown of long-term wood care and historic moisture barriers helped you understand how real durability is built, make sure you subscribe to Thermal Vault and share this video so more people can access knowledge that still matters today.